The movie begins at a gas station, and we see a man named Lee Young Su who works as a dealer for Kia Motors. Young Su is getting his car refueled at the gas station before continuing his journey. At the gas station, an elderly attendant mistakenly fills his tank to full contrary to Young Su's instructions, causing delays in the transaction. Despite the error, Young Su remains composed and lets it slide, as a gesture of apology. The old man offers Young Su two bottles of water. Young Su then resumes his journey with his daughter's birthday cake in the back seat, driving carefully down the road to stave off hunger. He snacks on fast food French fries during the drive, while his wife discusses getting their child a puppy through the car speaker, but he is not in favor of this idea. The GPS warns about an upcoming tunnel. Shortly after, his boss calls, so Young Su postpones the conversation with his wife. Engaged in a business discussion with his boss, Young Su drives through the Hado Tunnel, which stretches 1961 meters through the hills. After ending the call, Young Su hears strange noises from parts of the tunnel he just passed, sparking worry and panic. As he looks around, the lights suddenly go out, leaving him breathing heavily as he navigates the dark tunnel. The lights fluctuate, and the eerie noises persist, to Young Su's horror. The tunnel begins to collapse, and despite his car's speed, he realizes he cannot escape the imminent danger ahead. Now trapped inside the tunnel, Young Su is faced with the grim reality of his situation. He opens his bloodshot eyes, his face covered in dust and debris. Before he can even make a move to escape, the tunnel continues to collapse, leaving him further injured and helpless. He moves carefully to grab his phone, knowing that if he's not careful, his car could move further down the wreckage. He tries calling the emergency hotline, but there's no network connection. Trying again, his call successfully gets through. Young Su reports that he's trapped in the Hado Tunnel and it's still collapsing. After confirming his location, the receiver keeps asking questions, insisting it was a rock slide. Young Su has to repeat several times that the tunnel itself collapsed. Frustration and anger build up in his voice with the lack of urgency from the emergency hotline. The receiver tells him to wait in a safe place, assuring him that with no traffic, they'll arrive in about five minutes. The call abruptly ends, leaving Young Su alone in the cold, dark tunnel, hoping that help will soon come for him. To calm himself down while waiting to be rescued, he grabs one of the water bottles from the old man at the gas station. He thirstily gulps the water down, letting every drop quench his desperation. On the other side of the tunnel, the emergency team arrives. Much to their shock, the spot where the Hado Tunnel once stood is now just a mountain of fallen debris. The look on their faces suggests that this will not be a quick and easy rescue operation. The collapse of the month-old tunnel is all over the news, confirming that at least one person is trapped inside. Si Haiyan is just on her way out of the grocery store when she hears the grim news that her husband Young Su is the man trapped under the collapsed tunnel. Young Su's phone rings and the call turns out to be from a TV news reporter who wants to cover his story. Such news would make the headlines and increase viewership for the TV station. The reporter asks him about his feelings, revealing that it will be a long-term rescue operation as both entrances of the Hado Tunnel are deemed impassable. Upon learning that the news channel contacted Young Su, the rescue task force chief Kim D. Kine gets angry and this causes a heated argument with the producer. He is concerned that if Young Su's phone battery dies, the survivor might fall into a heightened panic in his isolation, fearing it might lead to a heart attack. He berates the news channel and media that they are only concerned about their TPR and not Young Su's life and well-being. D. Kyung emphasizes that the phone is Young Su's lifeline. A few minutes later, D. Kyung gets to talk to Young Su on the phone asking him to calm down. He informs Young Su that he's in charge of the operation and that the situation is not that simple. Young Su is given reassurance that he will be saved, but it will take some time. When asked if he has enough food and water to last through the waiting game, we see Young Su cover his face with his hands in a moment of uncertainty and despair. Di Kang instructs him to ration the water for a week, 
assuring him that they'll rescue him before he drinks all the water he has left. Doubt clouds Yong Su's mind, and he asks the task force chief if he can be rescued. D. Kang then reassures him, stating that they are the best rescuers in Korea. As Yong Su holds on to every inch of hope that he will be saved, his wife Si Hyun calls and asks how he is. She is crying in deep concern but tries to keep herself together in front of their daughter Sujin. Young Su talks to the birthday girl and apologizes that he won't be able to make it to her celebration because of work. Here we witness a father's love as he promises Sujin to bring her a cake and a puppy once he comes home. With nothing left to do but wait, Young Su falls into a dreamless sleep. To get a closer look inside the tunnel, both the press and the rescue team fly in drones. However, the cameras fail to capture what's going on as they lose signal after going a bit deep in the tunnel. It is because the tunnel has a large amount of iron and that is disrupting the signals causing the drones to disconnect. Moments later, D. Kyung and one of his subordinates brave the tunnel in a van. They come to a point where the way ahead is totally closed by debris and D. Kyung gets out of the van and inspects the damage firsthand. He sees the blockage and realizes the severity of the collapse. D. Kyung honks the car horn. Young Su hears it and calls D. Kyung, confirming that he's nearby. This gives both parties hope that things may be resolved sooner than initially thought. However, they might have celebrated too soon as the tunnel is nowhere near finished collapsing. Steel panels from the roof and cement debris threaten to put the rescuers in grave danger. The chief instructs Young Su to lie down as low as he can. Manically, he drives the van in reverse as the tunnel continues to fall right before their eyes. We see that D. Kyung made it out of the tunnel. Cut to the scene where Si Hyun hurriedly runs toward the tunnel entrance. D. Kyung tries to call Young Su to check if he's alive and well. Young Su can respond and confirm his precise location by describing the number of the huge fan that fell on his car. With this new information, the rescue team sends helicopters and starts drilling on the site towards Young Su. On the third day of the collapse, we see how he tries to ration his food and water. He has eaten little by little from the cake he got for his daughter, and he drinks the water in the cap of the bottle. This not only shows a man's hunger and thirst, but also his will to survive. Scouring through the back compartment of his car, Young Su finds some helpful items. While inspecting the rest of his things, he hears a sound and realizes he isn't alone. Out of nowhere, there it is, staring right at him, an unscathed bulldog. Then another voice is heard, a young woman pleading for help. Yong Su attempts to locate the source of the sound by crawling past the fan. When he reaches the woman's car, he sees a huge rock completely blocking the steering wheel and windshield, rendering the woman unable to move at all. Young Su tries to calm her down and assures her that the entire country is mobilizing rescue efforts to save them. The woman feels a sense of relief, but also notices the dryness in her throat. She asks Young Su if he has any water. With a strong sense of humanity, Young Su gives his water to the woman. Even though he knows that the water in the bottle is just enough to survive for the next few days. In her desperation, the woman asks if he could also give her beloved pet dog some water. His eyes hesitate, but he understands that this is the right thing to do. She also requests that he look for her phone, but it is found severely damaged and no longer working. The young woman, whose name is Mai Na, asks if she could use Young Su's phone for a call to her mom. While talking to her mom, Mai Na starts to cry and Young Su also talks to her mother, who tells him to take care of her daughter. As Mai Na decides to rest, Young Su retreats to his car, grabbing a slice of her daughter's birthday cake. He sets aside a portion, promising to share it with his daughter. Drained, he drifts into sleep, only to be startled awake by movement beneath his feet, discovering the dog feasting on the remaining cake. Contrary to his usual composure, Young Su struggles to contain his frustration. Mai Na's urgent call for help breaks the tense silence, detailing her excruciating pain and difficulty breathing due to the weight of the rock on her chest. Despite depleting their water supply, Young Su can't refuse her request. Retrieving the bottle, he returns to find Mai Na seemingly asleep. However, Mai Na's silence becomes ominous. 
Frantically, Yung Su tries to free her from the weight pressing on her chest, but his efforts come too late. A steel bar has pierced through her chest, leaving Yung Su overwhelmed with grief. Despite his best efforts, Yung Su is unable to save Mai Na's life. Mai Na has died, but in the process of helping her, Yung Su has depleted most of his resources. Yung Su's limited food and water supply pose a threat to his survival and can lead to his demise in the coming days. With only a small bottle of water left, he must ration it carefully to prolong his survival. Despite the passage of days, the rescue team has yet to reach him. With no drinking water left from his dwindling resources, Young Su is forced to resort to drastic measures, drinking his own urine to stay alive, and even eating dog food for sustenance. In a desperate moment, he almost mistakes his urine, but is saved by the sight of water dripping from the collapsed area. Excitedly, he calls his wife to share the news that he has found drinking water. As snow begins to fall on the mountains of Hado, a pivotal moment arrives. The rescue team finally drills into a part of the tunnel. The spokesperson informs the media that they will be able to reach the tunnel the following day and can extract Yong Su soon. During the drilling process, however, they realize that something is amiss. The blueprint they were using as a reference turns out to be inaccurate. To their dismay, they've been drilling on the wrong spot for 17 days, a significant waste of time and effort in a situation where time is of the essence. With the whole area now covered in snow, they have to start again from scratch. Di Kang apologizes to Yong Su and informs him of the mistake. The sense of despair is palpable in both of their voices, leaving feelings of sadness and frustration. Yong Su shouts in anger and helplessness. Si Haiyan, deeply worried, tries to calm her husband down over the phone as his battery is dying. He starts saying his farewells to her, expressing that he can't go on any longer. Distraught with his condition, Yong Su's wife continues to encourage him and even resorts to threats, telling him that if he dies, she and their daughter will also die. She pleads with Yong Su to live for their sake. Drenched in the snow, with tears still rolling down her cheeks, Si Haiyan barely manages to walk a few steps before she loses her remaining strength and faints. 23 days since the collapse and one week since contact was lost, the government officials planned to halt the rescue mission. There was little hope left for Young Su's survival, and the operation incurred significant costs. Additionally, an incident resulting in the death of a rescue team member acted as a catalyst to cease the rescue efforts. Si Haiyan breaks down after being confronted by the deceased man's mother, who urges her to stop the rescue operations before anyone else gets hurt. After 27 days of fruitless rescue missions, Yong Su's operation is officially dismissed. In a heartbreaking message to her husband through the radio, Si Haiyan reluctantly tells him not to wait anymore because no one is coming. Despite the widespread belief that Young Su is already dead, Si Haiyan holds on to the hope that he's still alive. However, she's forced to accept that the rescue efforts will no longer continue. It's painful for Young Su to hear that his wife has given up searching for him. Desperately, he tries to revive his phone to make contact, but it's in vain. With all the strength he has left, he crawls through the blockages to make his way out of the tunnel. On the other side, an angry D. Kang returns to the drilling site, determined to continue the operations despite everyone else giving up. Refusing to stop trying, the task force chief himself ventures down the tunnel to check whether Yong Su is dead or alive. However, he's hastily brought back up as Hado Construction prepares to blast the area for their second tunnel. The explosion sends shockwaves through the entire area. Hurriedly returning to his car, D. Kang repeatedly honks the car horn. The loud sound is picked up by his device from the ground. It's exhilarating when D. Kang orders everyone to stop the detonation and announces that Yong Su is alive in the tunnel. Covered in falling debris, Yong Su continues to honk the car horn in his final attempt to call for help. On the 35th day after the collapse, the rescue team descends into the tunnel upon confirmation that Yong Su is indeed alive. D. Kang finds him lying face forward in a bed of huge rocks. After over a month of trying, failing, and trying again, the team finally carries Yong Su out of the tunnel. The media frenzy wants to cover every part of the momentous event. A path is cleared for Si Haiyan, 
whose first words upon seeing Yong Su alive are, I'm sorry. As they're about to board the chopper, Hado's staff instructs them to wait for the minister. Yong Su then whispers something to Di Kyung. When asked about Yong Su's first words to the world after his rescue, Di Kyung shouts at the press to go away and swears at them. In response, Yong Su gives a thumbs up. Finally, Yong Su and his wife can be together again. We then see them in a car, Yong Su is in the passenger seat and Si Hyun is driving. They drive through a tunnel. We see Yong Su still terrified and traumatized, but ultimately overcoming his fear as the movie comes to an end.